Hey there, I'm Source Make, and welcome to the video on the classic 0-1 knapsack problem, which happens to be a really great introduction to dynamic programming. So in this video, we are going to go over the problem. We're going to look at two approaches. One of them is the naive approach, which is really easy to code, but isn't that optimal. The other is the dynamic programming approach, which is really optimal, but it's sort of hard to understand, and we're going to go through an example to see how it works. So we're going to do all that, and I happen to have found this problem on HackerRank. I really like this problem, so I solved it on there. And I've got the code that you're going to be seeing today on my website. It's right here, so you can follow along after this video if you want. There will be links to these under this video. You can click them after the video ends. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button to this YouTube channel. Thanks. So the classic 0-1 knapsack problem is this. A thief is robbing a museum, and he only has a single knapsack to carry all the items that he steals. The knapsack has a certain capacity for the amount of weight that it can hold, and each item in the museum has a certain weight and a value associated with it. So given the knapsack capacity and the weight and values for each one of the items in the museum, find the maximum value that the thief can steal. And so if we look at a more specific example, we can see that we've got our thief here and his knapsack capacity is 5, meaning he can hold 5 pounds or 5 kilograms or whatever worth of items. You can see that the museum has 4 gems in it and each gem has a certain value and a certain weight associated with it. So for example, this gem could be worth $7 and it could weigh 2 pounds. And so we want to find the ways that this thief can steal the gem so that he gets the maximum value. So for example, he could try taking each gem individually. If he were to take this red gem, then his knapsack value would be 10 and his knapsack weight would be 4. That weight is valid and so he would walk away with $10 worth of items. And you could try this for each individual gem or you could see the solution where he takes these two gems in which case the values add up to be 15 inside the knapsack and the weight ends up being 5 which is still valid and so he would end up with $15 worth of stuff. And if you look at each one of these solutions then the best value in this case would be 15 and we would say that he can steal $15 worth of stuff. That's the maximum value. That's what our code would return. And so if you look at the algorithm for this, we want to sort of do this the naive way to start out with, which is trying all possible ways of taking items. So we've got our thief over here, and initially his knapsack has zero value and zero weight inside of it. And he goes inside the museum and he sees this first item, the first gem. And he's got two choices. He can either take this gem or he doesn't take the gem. If he takes the gem, then his knapsack adds its value and weight of this gem to it. And so the knapsack value would be 7 and the new weight would be 2. If he doesn't take the gem, then the knapsack value and weight would stay the same, which is going to be 0 and 0. So he looks at that gem. He's got two choices. Now he sees the second gem. And he's got more choices to, uh, for, for this gem. So we see along this path, if he were to try to take this gem with this gem already, that would be invalid, right? Because his knapsack can only hold five pounds and these two gems end up being six pounds. And so um, the, it's not really valid. And so we would say this path is invalid. But you can keep going with these combinations of taking gems and not taking gems until we visit each one. And then after visiting each one of these paths, we would have a certain knapsack value and weight associated with the knapsack. And we would take the best knapsack value from each one of these valid paths. And that would be the final answer. And in our previous case, that ended up being 15. So if we look at the code that actually solves this, um, it's C++ code. If C++ isn't your language, don't worry. We care about the algorithm here. And the way we would solve this is with a recursive function called try taking items. So in this recursive function, we care about three things in our state. We care about which item we're visiting, which is going to be the index. We care about the current knapsack value and the current knapsack weight. And we've also got these variables here in the function just to know what the item values and item weights are and what the knapsack capacity is. We're not actually going to be touching these. They're constants. But inside of this recursive function, we've got two boundary conditions. One of them is if we go over the knapsack capacity, like in the case where we try to um, take that four pound gem and add it to our knapsack that already has two pounds, that's invalid. And so we would return zero for the value of that path. The other boundary condition is if we visit all the gems in the path and that ended up being valid in terms of weight, then we would just return the knapsack value that we accumulated so far. And so then what we want to do recursively is try both situations of we don't take this item or we do take this item. And if we don't take the gem, what happens is we just increment the index one, you know, we're going to look at the next item and we keep the same knapsack value and the same knapsack weight because we didn't change those values. 
And if we do take the gem, then what we want to do is still increment to look at the next item. But this time we're going to add this gem's value and add this gem's weight to our knapsack so that we can keep track of that in our state. And finally, what we want to do is we want to return the maximum between these two paths. Whichever one has a higher value, that's our answer. And so our initial state for when we call our recursive function is going to be 0 for the index. We're going to look at the first item and 0 and 0 for the knapsack weight and value because there's initially nothing inside of it. And so this is how we find our solution. This works. The time complexity is 2 raised to the number of items. So this solution depends on the number of items. For every single item, we've got two choices. And so that's why it looks sort of like a binary tree. And our space complexity is going to be dependent on the number of items. And that's because for every single item, we're going to have to store it in stack space in our program because we're doing that recursive call. And so this is a working solution. The code is really simple. You can see it's only a few lines. The problem is it's not very fast. 2 raised to the number of n is not really scalable. And so what we want to do is optimize this by using the dynamic programming solution. And the way to think about dynamic programming, if you've never heard the term before, is you want to store the best answer for each valid state. And so if we look at this particular example, our 0, 1 knapsack problem, our dynamic programming algorithm is going to be this. We want to generate the maximum value for each valid knapsack weight. And so you can see that we generated this array here. It's a 2D array. And each cell is going to represent a certain knapsack weight that's going to be valid, and it's going to visit a certain item. And so you can think of this cell as, hey, what's the maximum value I can get while visiting this item and, and all the past items, and we're only allowed to go up to this knapsack weight. That's what this cell represents. We're going to calculate each one of these, and then the final answer is going to be visiting all the items, so the bottom row, and maximizing the amount of capacity we can have, which is using the most weight possible, which is the final column. And that's going to be this final cell right here. So this first row looks a little weird. It's because it's a case where we don't pick up any items. The, the knapsack is empty. So these are all going to be 0. And then we've got this case where we've got this first cell here. It's the first gem. We've got two choices, right? We can either take this gem or we can't take this gem. Well, it turns out that we actually cannot take this gem because it would be invalid. We're only allowed to have a knapsack weight of 0 at this cell, and this gem weighs 2 pounds, so there's no way we can pick it up. In that case, what we do is we take the previous item's value at this weight, which is going to be this cell right here. So we just copy the 0 down here. We do the same thing for here, knapsack weight of 1. We cannot take this gem, so we just take the previous row, the previous item's weight, um, the previous item's value at this weight, which is 0. Then we look at this cell right here, and now suddenly we can take this gem, and so we've got a choice to make. Do we take this gem or not? Well, we've got two choices. We don't take this gem, in which case we take the previous row's value, which is going to be the previous item at this weight. We're going to say this could be the potential max value, or we could take this gem. And if we take this gem, we add this gem's value plus the best value we can have if we were to have space in our knapsack for this value. And in that case, it's going to be the previous item, zero at the knapsack weight, um, where we could potentially take this item, which in this case is going to be knapsack weight of 2 minus 2 is going to be this cell right here. And so we're going to say 7 plus 0 is if we take this gem, or we could not take it, in which case it's 0, and the maximum between those two is a 7. We can do that one more time. Let's look at this cell right here. We've, for this cell, we can only have a knapsack weight of 3, and so we've got two choices. We could not take this um, gem, in which case we just take this cell right here, which is the previous item at this weight, which is going to be 0. Or we could take this gem, in which case we add the value 7 up to the best value for the capacity, which in this case is going to be the previous item at the previous best weight, which in this case is going to be 3 minus 2 is knapsack weight of 1, which is going to be this cell right here. So 7 plus 0 versus this 0, we pick the 7 plus 0, which is going to be 7. And we continue filling in cells. You can see we've got this cell right here. This is another interesting case. Let's talk about this. So we've got two choices. Can we take this gem? The answer is no, because it weighs 4 pounds, and we're only allowed to take up to 2 pounds at this cell. So we can't take this gem, in which case we take the previous item's value at this weight, which in this case is the 7 right here. So we add it. 
Same thing for this one. We're going to take this 7 for here. Now we've got another cell. We actually can take this gem now. So we've got, we've got the choice to make. Um, we don't take the gem, in which case we have to take the previous row, the previous item at this weight, which is going to be this value of 7. Or we can take this gem, in which case we add this value plus the best capacity that would be possible previously, which in this case is going to be the knapsack weight of 4 minus 4. So we go to this item's knapsack weight of 0. So 0 plus 10 versus the 7, we take the 10. Um, yeah. And so we keep filling in our cell like this using that same technique. Let's do these last three together to see what happens. This gem right here has a value of 8. We can either take it because it's valid or we don't take it. If we don't take this gem, then the best value would be 7 because that's the best value for this previous item at this weight. Or we could take it, in which case we add this value plus the best, um, the best value at the capacity, which in this case is going to be knapsack weight of 3 minus 3. So this is going to be this cell right here. So 8 plus 0 or this 7, we're going to take this gem, so that's going to be an 8. So now we've got this cell right here. We can either take this gem or don't take it. If we don't take the gem, then the value is going to be 10. If we do take this gem, then we're going to do an 8 plus, what is this? 4 minus 3 is going to be knapsack weight of 1 at this item is 0. So 8 plus 0 is 8 versus this 10. We're going to take the 10. Final cell, this is going to be our answer actually. So we can either take the previous value, which is going to be this 12, or we can do 8 plus knapsack weight of 5 minus 3 means the capacity we could potentially have is 2. So we go to the previous item and we go to that capacity and that's going to be 7. So this 7 plus this gem is going to be um, 15 total versus this 12. We take the 15. That's going to be our final answer. Our final answer is the bottom right cell of this table. And just notice for the purposes of this um, problem, all the value is going to be e increasing when you go down, which makes sense. As you see more gems, you have more choices, and so you're going to find the best possible answers. And as you go to the right, you're also going to see values increase because you're increasing the weight that you're allowing yourself to take. And so that um, leaves more possibilities. So 15 is the final answer. So that's how you solve this problem using dynamic programming. Again, you generate an array that stores the best possible answers. In this case, we've got a 2D array where each cell represents a certain knapsack weight that we think is valid and a certain item that we visit so far. And each cell, the value of each cell is going to be the maximum value and it represents the knapsack weight and item. So let's look at the code for this. You can see in our code, the first thing that we do is initialize our DP table. The number of rows is going to be the number of items plus one. So in our example, we had four gems plus one for the no item situation, and that's going to end up being five. The number of columns, the width of our rows, is going to be the knapsack capacity plus one. So in this example, we could have held five pounds. So that's five, each one of these plus a zero is going to end up being six total. So we generate that 2D array. Then we want to go through each item, which includes the no item situation. I've got this code here that sets up the indexes for the previous item, current item, item value, and item weight. It's sort of important to remember that the situation with no item is a bit tricky because we don't have an item value or weight for that. So we don't want to go out of bounds when we access that array. And so in that situation, we just say, for no item, the value is 0 and the weight is 0. So we go through each item, then we're going to go through each valid knapsack weight. And for each one of those, we want to figure out the maximum value that the knapsack could be at this point and fill in the DP table for that um, particular position. So there are four cases we care about. One of them is the first row. We haven't seen any items. There's no items for us to look at. In that case, all we can do is put 0. The other case is the first column. So the first column means the knapsack weight is 0. We're not allowed to pick anything up. So in that case, the value for the knapsack is going to be 0 because there's nothing we can add to it. And then the next case is where the item would make us go over the weight limit. So we don't have a choice. We cannot take this item. In that case, what we do is we set the value equal to the previous item, which is the previous row, at that same knapsack weight. That's going to be the best value for us. And then the final case is we do have the choice. We can possibly take the gem or not. So we've got a choice. We don't take the item, which is the same thing over here. The value is going to be the previous item at that knapsack weight, or we do take the item. And if we do take the item, we add that item's value to the previous item at the best capacity, which in that case is going to be the knapsack weight minus the item weight. Um, and then we pick the maximum between those two to set in our DP table. Our final answer, once again, is going to be the bottom right of the DP table, 
which we're going to access being the number of items and the knapsack capacity. So is this solution better? The answer is sort of. The time complexity is much better, but the space complexity is worse. So the time complexity is going to be the number of items times the knapsack capacity. Remember, that's just the size of our 2D array. We're going to visit each cell exactly once. But then our space complexity is also going to be the number of items times the knapsack capacity because we're storing that entire array in memory. So that's it. That's how you solve the classic zero and knapsack problem. The code is actually pretty simple. If you want to see that code, there will be a link to the blog post below this video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. If there's something particular you want to see, make sure you leave a comment. Or if this was helpful, leave a comment saying that too. Maybe you can like the video. I'm Source Make. Thanks for watching.